Casey and the Sports Doctor here, Center Court, Connecticut Sun in the beautiful Mohegan Sun Arena with Connecticut Sun head coach Kurt Miller. And coach, thank you for taking a few minutes with us. Very calm here in the empty arena, but it doesn't get that way. You guys have been playing tremendous basketball, sitting in the three seed. And that begs my first question. Talk a little bit about the journey. Uh, you come in wearing two different hats, general manager and coach. Uh, and how do those reconcile themselves from taking a team that was looking to get you know, back into contention and now here you are back into a, into a playoff team? Sure, you gotta go back to my hiring only as the head coach and, and clearly happy in that role. Uh, Chris Sienko, a tremendous longtime GM in the league, uh, had those um, duties and we worked really well together. A tremendous GM, um, really cared on how I wanted to put together the talent and uh, let me have a lot of say, but uh, didn't foresee at the end of that first year that uh, he was gonna resign. And so uh, thankful that the organization thought that I could handle both roles, but uh, both roles are independent. The coach in you wants to be successful now and is probably a little less patient where the GM has to think bigger picture, long-term, try to build for sustained success. Uh, so I have to be careful. I have to balance both those hats because I'm competitive. I want to win now, but I know there's a bigger picture and trying to build something that can really sustain through the years. Coach, does culture determine winning or does winning determine the culture? And which is the more viable statement? And how were you guys able to do both, win and change the culture? in such a short period of time here? You know, I bring a different perspective, spending 24 years at the collegiate level, um, you know, a little bit different perspective at that. It's all about culture. And that's what I built my career as a culture person. I believe championships are first won in the locker room before they can win on the court. And despite my youth in the professional game and in the WNBA, I saw what a good locker room in my first year as an assistant could do. And so I brought that same philosophy as a head coach that I thought we had to build our culture, build it from the locker room out. And so I've worked really, really hard to get that piece right. And as we got that piece right last year, it has catapulted us into this year. And despite a couple close losses early, a little bit of a slow start in May, we directly correlate our success this season to the culture in that locker room. Is that more personnel or is that winning? It's definitely personnel. Okay. You know, it, it, in women's sports, it, it, where I have all my experiences, culture is everything. And, uh, you know, it, it's amazing what's happening in our locker room right now. They really care for each other on and off the court. They spend a lot of time with each other. And so through the highs and lows of games, they stick by each other because they truly care for each other on and off. And, and you can't minimize that enough. We have a great culture right now. We may not always be the best team each and every night, but we know we got each other's backs. They care for each other, play hard for each other. So I look around the league and I see Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, Uncasville. Uh, it, it doesn't fit, uh, you know, the state of Connecticut doesn't fit with the big markets that exist uh, you are the only major league franchise in the state of Connecticut. So what are the advantages, uh, disadvantages from both uh, a coaching perspective or from the general manager's perspective of this very unique uh, fan base, uh, very unique ownership, very unique market that exists We're out of you know, a casino in Connecticut? Absolutely. Great question. And one of the things that we've tried to really tackle and challenge, uh, professional women's basketball is all year round and if there's no secret that they make even more money overseas playing professionally. So they're in Russia, they're in Turkey, they're in China, they're in Korea. Tremendous leagues are making money playing a sport and they're very, very fortunate, but there's no season off. So they come back from places like Russia and Turkey and they wanna be in the big markets. And that's one of the challenges of Connecticut that they don't wanna come back to Uncasville. They don't wanna live in East Lyme when they come back. They'd rather be in a big market with more to do after games or uh, a more of a draw to bring family and friends to come visit them. So again, it went back to the culture. What can we do different as an organization? And, and start the ball and start the, they very, very close, 144 or less people in this league and they all play all year round with each other. So how can we get the buzz out there that Connecticut is a destination location? And it's how you treat people and it's the culture that you have. Is it a fun style? Does coach care for you on and off the court? Do we do the little things? And, and we do do the little things. We feel like we give them tons of extra benefits of being a Connecticut Sun player and we hope that that buzz is spreading around 
the league because the big thing that we're trying to change is make it a destination location for free agents, that they don't want to be in the big markets, that we're a special market and a different type of market. And I think it's going to appeal to people down the, down the line. Co Coach, I'm, you used the term fun. And that's one of the things I hear from the fans. The games are fun again. You guys lead the league in scoring. I believe averaging about 87 points a game. And do the players in your system have a green light on the offensive end? What, what makes your offense right now so special? Well, certainly I'm a big believer in spacing. So offense is spacing, spacing is offense in my opinion. So we have structure, we have discipline, but we allow them to play their games. We put Alyssa Thomas as a, a facilitating forward and let her play downhill. Jasmine Thomas is a tremendous athlete. We give her the green light to be in attack mode. So we try to be in attack mode. We try to be one of the highest possessions teams in the league. And right now it's working. We're the highest scoring team in the league. That's fun. I, I don't know if anyone in the pro game wants to be recruited to say, hey, come over and play in Connecticut. We're going to slow the ball down. It's certainly you know, entertaining for the fans. You know, so it, it's a fun style for the fans. Um, it's an up and down attacking style. That's what we wanted to bring here. I didn't know we would lead the league this fast, uh, but that's the way we like to play. And it, it's another reason that could be attraction to free agents, that you get to play in an up-tempo, fun, attacking style where they have the green light and uh, all pro players want the green light. One thing that I've noticed about, uh, about this market, and I, and I don't know about other markets, uh, even though it's a major league franchise, I see a lot of the similarities that exist in, in a good way with some of the minor league franchises and other sports, which are really, the atmosphere is family friendly and the players are part of the community. Uh, and I don't know if that exists in New York and in Seattle, but I love the promotional things that the Sun do to get the players known amongst the community. And it's not unusual to see Connecticut Sun players out in the community. Um, and I, I, is that unique to here, or is that something that the WNBA does since it's such a, you know, a difficult market share that they're trying to enter into? Sure, it's certainly not unique only to us, but we have a unique market. And I have a new vice president, Amber Cox, who does a great job getting us out. And it's my belief that we have to be touchable. You know, one of the things that I felt like in college that we did well was our team was touchable, so now they even relate even more to the players. And so we try to be real engaged in the regional community, and we're growing more and more, and we're trying to open up more of a fan base in Boston and Providence and bring more down from the Hartford area. We're very, very fortunate that Connecticut is a women's basketball state and the success of UConn. You can, you can really utilize that. But we're gaining our own fans. Even fans that don't follow UConn are now starting to follow the Sun, and it's their favorite team. But uh, we're really active in the community. It's our philosophy, and, uh, and, and our players in, in, in really, really enjoy being out there. Coach, you guys started the season one and five. Yes. So how do you, I hate to remind you, yes. but how do you as a coach and as a staff keep your team from you know, either not getting too low or not getting too high when things are going good. You guys are getting towards the end of the season right now. You know, how do you stay right in the middle collectively as a coaching staff and keep the players in line where, you know, it's not the ups and downs. It's okay, one game at a time, let's keep moving forward. Yeah, I think you, you we couldn't get too high, too low is my philosophy. You can never, you know, you can't go up and down like that. In those first losses, we were losing close. And what was happening late in games is, we were letting one player try to win or lose the game. We had a lot of people standing around and letting one person try to take the big shot. And when we got that corrected, we went back and watched film that we may not play through one player, but if we have five players hunting for shots, continuing to move the basketball, that we don't have to have one outstanding player. Shot distribution is pretty even amongst our team. So now they can't key on one particular player down the stretch. And in our close wins as of late, it's different people that have stepped up in that situation. So we've really changed that. So we're, we're excited about um, you know, being able to watch films. So you have to show a balance right now. Um, late in the year, we show things that we're not doing well. At the same time, you have to bring them in at times and show things that you're doing you're doing well, so it's not all negative, it's not all right. positive, that you keep showing them both ways. I think we were both wondering too, after the one on five start, was there a specific trip or turning point or a stretch of games where you guys gained confidence and kind of took off from? 
you know, I just think it was that next win. And uh, when we finally got over the hump, that first close win, it all started to come together because we knew we were there. We were right there in the fourth quarters, but we were coming up short. So as we started to win a couple of those close games, then it snowballed. So all of a sudden now we're 18 and five in our last 23 games, but we want to peak at the right time. We got five really difficult games left, that, but we are secured in the playoffs, guaranteed home game. So great for our fan base, but we still have the opportunity to peak at the right time. So we got things to work on. At the same time, this league is brutal in terms of travel and the amount of games. So we have to get them rest, uh, but we're going to try to peak uh, in this last couple of weeks. Well, a couple of good things. Eight and two in your last 10, 18 and five, as you mentioned, and a really good home record, which bodes well. You're playing well in front of the home fans and you have a couple of home games coming up Wednesday night and Friday night, uh, Dallas and Chicago, uh, a couple of the, the last two home games until the playoffs. Um, how do you prepare for that stretch? You know you're in the playoffs, you got a couple of home games. What's the preparation? What do you do differently to get the team ready for the playoffs? You know, the, the secret to us is we're consistent. So our prep will remain very, very similar. Uh, one of the things we have to guard against right away on Wednesday night against Dallas is a star player has been suspended for the game for them. So we can't overlook them. Now they're different. Uh, in, in some ways, even harder to guard. They'll have better spacing. They'll have more three-point shooting. They'll be a little bit smaller. So, you know, like as one thing happens, another, there's, there's obviously an unintended consequence. So now we got to prepare for Dallas completely different than we prepared for Dallas just a week or so ago. So, um, and then you got Chicago, who you haven't played for a while. So, but if you're consistent, my, they, they get bored with my uh, <laughs> consistency. But, uh, you know, we, we aren't uh, reinventing the wheel every day out there. We're very consistent in our approach, and they appreciate that. They know what to expect each and every day they come in here. Well, in a league that you know all these teams, there's no secrets out there. So when you talk about consistency, I guess it really comes down to execution for some of these teams or, you know, because the talent level is, you know, outside of a couple of teams that maybe in Minnesota or Los Angeles, well, you guys are pretty close together. So there's no secrets out there. It just comes down to executing. Absolutely. And in women's basketball, execution is the key. We have less players in our league compared to the NBA that when you're out of system, someone can just go make an incredible one-on-one -on -one play or an incredibly difficult shot. We've got to have execution. We've got to stay within the plays. While we have outstanding players, we make less of those plays out of system than the men's game. So in women's basketball, execution is the key, and you're really, really trying to continue to work on that and make sure that you're, you're trending the right way near the end of the season. Well, Coach, we have a couple of important dates coming up. We mentioned home Wednesday night, home Friday night, but then everyone to remember 7-10-12. That's the best way you can remember it. Uh, the playoffs are coming. There's going to be a home game. Uh, the, if, it's a, if you're in the single elimination aspect, the 7th or the 10th, but if we're in that best of five semifinals, starts on the 12th, a different structure to the playoffs this year. I know they want to try to get the two best teams. Last year, LA and Minnesota were those two teams. They're the top of the league again, but lurking right there in the three spot, the Sun. Uh, so playoffs are coming around the corner. What do we have to do to get into that best of five semifinals? We're guaranteed a top six spot now. So we're guaranteed minimum to be in that five, eight, six, seven game. With a win or two more, we'll definitely be in that top five. But we're trying not to talk about September 7th. <laughs> if we can get into the top four, you have a first round bye. So then our home game, if you're in that three or four seed going into the playoffs, you're going to play a home game on September 10th. If we were fortunate to make a run these last five games and be able to catch either Minnesota or LA for one of the top two spots, then we, you would advance directly to the semifinals, which as you said, would, this series would start in September 12th. But, so we're trying to avoid <laughs> September 7th, but we know that date's out there. Um, minimum. Some bad numbers on the craps table too, Coach. Yeah, you know, yeah. stay away from those. But um, listen, it's gotta be a, a real good feel around here for, for players to come to work, coaches to come to work, and the excitement in the building and with the organization. Really excited. We know it's a fine line between winning and losing. I, I work for a tremendous uh, franchise with great people. And most importantly, we have a locker room filled with talented players that are even better people. So come out and support them. Uh, they're first class women. Well, yesterday provided Mother Nature's uh, version of how you can eclipse the sun. We're hoping that that doesn't happen. Stay tuned for great basketball. We want to thank Coach Kurt Miller Thanks. for coming in thank for you. a few minutes. And if you haven't gotten to Mohegan Sun to check out a Connecticut Sun game, no better time than the present.